Richard, our question is about happiness. And the seeker writes, I am not happy. I wouldn't say I'm depressed, but I certainly am not a happy person. I don't need or want to be hopping around all day singing, let the sun shine in or put on a happy face, but I would at least like to not be in this semi-permanent state of despair and sadness. How do I make myself happy? <laughs> There are, of course, many ways in which you can make yourself happy. And if you find that appropriate, these ways surely you should embrace. Uh, ways of making yourself happy, uh, pursuit of money, pursuit of power, having nice things to eat, uh, beautiful friends around you, movies, holidays, and so forth, or any sort of extraneous things. The trouble with any of these things in order to make you happy is that they are not permanent, of course. You can't constantly have a level of pleasure. There's bound to be some down times. There's bound to be some uh, times when the stimulation that you seek in order to make yourself happy um, isn't there or changes or somehow uh, it's less intense. So these extraneous or external ways in which we make ourselves happy, I am not invalidating them at all. By all means, uh, pursue them and enjoy yourself and you know, have a wonderful time. But if what you're saying is that you're seeking happiness or what we might call a state of happiness which is not assailable by, from, by changes, which is not, which is not uh, sourced, in the external world and therefore not a prey to conditions you see if that's what you're seeking then you're looking for what we might call uh, true happiness or what we might call um, essential happiness or a happiness which is innate a happiness which is not sourced in any kind of relationship with something else that by its very nature carries an insecurity because it may go away or it may cease to make us happy for one of many, many, many reasons. And if in your potential, in your capacity, you discern that you're not seeking, and there is after all in your question every reason to see that you're probably not seeking um, tran trans transient happiness then i suggest that you embrace the unhappiness it is true that there's a very positive side to depression because it is true that those of us who get somewhere through inner work are prone to dark times we're prone to darkness blackness dark thoughts even depression even extreme depression and all of those um, difficult, challenging, uh, and dark things which most people commonly want to push away. Oh, I don't feel so very good, I'll, I'll take a pill. You know, I don't feel so very good, I'll have a holiday. I don't feel so very good, I'll go out or something like this. It is a strange thing about people who are attracted to inner work, whether it's therapy or self-help or in a serious way or meditation, contemplation. Don't shy away from the dark corridors or what even is known as the dark night of the soul. And we don't shy away from that because we know that the dark place yields a greater light. And if we don't know that, we at least trust or we have faith in this idea that it could be because we're inspired by people who've traveled the dark corridors or gone through the, the black ways or they've been in the dark night of the soul or in the valley of the shadow of death and so forth. And there's so many symbols of this. We're inspired by that. And then when we have an experience of it, we say, oh, hey, you know, to, to, if I can just have the courage to embrace this darkness, this will lead to a greater light and so it does and if that is an inspiring idea i suggest that you just 
change that attitude toward the darkness in you presently, the depression, the unhappiness, um, any you know morbid fantasies, anything. Embrace the whole thing. Bring it closer to you. Occupy those places, not in a dangerous way, not in a way where perhaps you don't have support or where you don't feel inspired in that journey. But don't shy away because through courage you can face this darkness in yourself and it leads you to a greater light. And the aspects of that greater light, like a fabulous jewel, have many faces, many facets, many sides. One of them is happiness. And as you say, it's not the occasionally the dancing and the singing and the happy clappy idea of happiness by any means. It's something very uh, deep and fundamental in your soul that carries you through. And the next time you visit these dark corridors, you do so with happiness, quite foolishly, quite ridiculously, embracing the challenges of the darkness for the opportunities and the gifts that they will yield. So happiness is really a kind of fringe benefit of spiritual endeavor. It just uh, falls into our lap, so to speak. We don't pursue it as such. But it turns out to be something that is there for us to embrace, or it embraces us, we, we might say, better put. And that sort of happiness, because it is not dependent on any external stimulation, is curiously 100% uh, secure. It's a very different matter to seeking happiness through something else, some third party. It's a direct relationship because you find it's inherent in your condition as a natural human being. So this is the one I'd encourage you to um, aspire to and aspire to it by embracing the darkness. Take all your courage, all your heart, all your positivity to enter in to the darkness as profoundly and intimately and deeply as you possibly can, happiness awaits.